Hi everyone, Philippa from British History Tours. I've travelled now down to uh, Whitehall and Westminster. I want to show you the area again where Whitehall Palace stood. The area is still known as Whitehall. Um, but if you're a Tudor fan, you may come here and be quite disappointed to find that Whitehall Palace no longer exists. But I'm going to show you the area that it um, covered and also the bits of Whitehall Palace um, that you can kind of pick out. Would um, that are still here even though there may be later iterations of the palace. Whitehall Palace, um, you may also have heard of York Place, which was the residence of Cardinal Wolsey. And it was confiscated from Cardinal Wolsey, even though actually it wasn't his personal possession, it was the church's possession, but Henry VIII uh, didn't seem to worry too much about that. And they uh, so, so it came into the ownership of Henry VIII after it was uh, confiscated from Cardinal Wolsey and he and Anne Boleyn built uh, Whitehall Palace and it was vast and extraordinary and beautiful. So let me show you what is still here. You're looking out towards the Thames um, behind, where can you see, oh yeah behind those trees, I don't know if you can see the bottom of the London Eye, probably can't, you can hear a jazz band playing because there were boats having parties along here. <laughs> Uh, but the river in Tudor times would have come a lot further inland. So in, in, under Victoria, Victoria's reign, we had this embankment created to house the sewage system, the new sewage system for the uh, city after the Cholera Act to try and clean up the city. This is known as Queen Mary's Steps, and this would have been a river entrance to Whitehall Palace. So they're still there. The building above is not part of any palace. So the area of Whitehall is our government buildings and you hear people say from Whitehall or it's been discussed at Whitehall. Well, Whitehall is this area. There's a fabulous book by Colin Brown who's a, who's a journalist um, about Whitehall. I'd recommend picking that up because it's the history of Whitehall, but the history of Whitehall is linked to so much of the history of the country. So I would recommend that book, Colin Brown, just called Whitehall. So I'm walking now down, so the river is now behind me. I'm walking to another place you will recognise, even if you don't know what's coming up, you'll recognise it pretty soon. And that is Horse Guards Parade. Horse Guards Parade, at the back of Horse Guards Parade is the, um, the show ground where you might have seen Trooping of the Colour and that is believed to have been the area where Henry VIII had his tilt yard, certainly that was the pleasure side of the palace. A little bit further down there is a real tennis court. So that's Horse Guards Parade, so the tilt yard, the pleasure side of the palace would have been that side. And this is the back of banqueting house and we're going to go around the front of it as well but while you can still hear me <laughs> the traffic this is the back of banqueting house you can see it's not Tudor the Tudor one burnt down as they had a habit of doing this one was built by James I so the king sorry James, well yeah James I of England James VI of Scotland who succeeded Elizabeth to the throne this is where his son, Charles I, was brought through. So he was actually brought through Banqueting House and he was beheaded at the front of Banqueting House. Charles I was Mary, Queen of Scots' grandson. And it was those... It, it, it was the run-up, uh, I suppose, the events of how we got to the point where Mary, Queen of Scots, was beheaded that had kind of allowed for... Well, it allowed for Parliament to be able to try a monarch and, uh, for treason and sentenced him for treason. So what happened to Mary Queen of Scots had a direct impact on what happened to her grandson Charles I. So his scaffold was set up around about where I'm standing, where about the, whereabouts those people are walking here and so this is where he's beheaded. I always find it quite interesting, spooky that people are walking through a, a site of execution of one of our monarchs 
and I doubt, I doubt many people know that. So this is Whitehall, the street now. It is really, really wide. It has been widened and any of the gates of the old palace, which would have restricted traffic flow, over the centuries uh, have been ridded, they've gone. So you're actually looking in the area where, um, oh gosh I, can't, oh gosh, I can't think of the name of the gate, but there was a gateway here and this is where uh, Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn were officially married. So you can see it doesn't exist now, but you can, <laughs> you can see the, uh, the area. I'm going to take and go over the road. Just a little bit more about Horse Guards Parade while I'm stood here. Oh, I can go. The, so I've just mentioned that behind me now is Banqueting House where Henry, the, uh, sorry, Henry, Jesus, uh, Charles I lost his head. Up on the clock above there, the Horse Guards Parade, if I stop for a moment, just cross the road, you might be able to see a black mark, there you go, by the two. And that is to um, kind of commemorate, I suppose, the time of day that Charles I was beheaded. So you've got that there. Opposite the place of execution, Banqueting House. So that is part of Whitehall Palace, but not the Tudor Whitehall Palace. There are small amounts left of the palace, but I, I think Wolsey's wine cellar is underneath the building somewhere because that had to be relocated when they uh, did some of the building work around here and also there's a tower that was um, part of the real tennis court but all of it's behind these government buildings now so if you happen to be a politician <laughs> you probably get to see the last remaining parts of the Tudor Whitehall Palace uh, but it's not something that we can go and see as ordinary people, unfortunately.